Okay, uh, let's get started with part two. So thank you. So now we will <clears throat> we will continue with the second part. So now I will speak more about uh, inter interpolation formulas for Schwarz functions. So as I already told you, so the idea be before, behind our construction of this uh, special functions f8 and uh, f lambda 24 is the idea that a Schwarz function, or what's important, a radial Schwarz function, uh, it can be reconstructed from this collection of its values and uh, the values of its uh, Fourier transform. And so for, we have many confirmations that such a formula indeed exists, but the complete proof of it, it's still an uh, ongoing project. So what I will talk about now, about uh, maybe a baby version of uh, this, uh, of such an interpolation formula. And then we will somehow see the idea behind, behind but also the dif difficulties which uh, <clears throat> arise to prove the full interpolation formula. So, so in a col collaboration with Danilo Radchenko, we proved the following result that, uh, so now instead of uh, considering RD, we just uh, consider uh, Schwarz functions on the real line, just to make things uh, simpler, but uh, similar formulas would also work for, uh, for, for, Schwarz, for radial Schwarz functions in or arbitrary dimension. So what we uh, proved is that uh, there exists a, oh, sorry, okay, so here, a collection of uh, functions, of Schwarz functions, such that if we take any, ration, any function p, then it can be reconstructed from its uh, values in this basis. And so the uh, right-hand side of this sum, it would converge absolutely. Sorry? Oh, okay. So, so. Yes, yes. So, so here, because, because now we are summing somehow from, from, uh, from uh, at, uh, negative and positive numbers. So maybe a com complete analogy would be actually considering only uh, even Schwartz functions, but it turns out that for odd Schwartz, Schwartz functions, this is also true. So we can write it just for any for any function. Yeah. So it turns out that somehow that here, what what is a, a, another interesting point is that. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So B is C. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you want to reconstruct now in this case, not only even but also a odd, odd function, we also have to include the derivative at zero. And so here are the, these uh, functions, the, but again, only there. So now this is what, what B is, where B came from, is that by, by B we denote the, so to say, the even part of our basis functions. And then they look like this. And so this uh, result, it, it can be reformulated in the following way. So it can tell us something about the space of Schwarz functions. So now we denote by this, uh, uh, how it's called, it's uh, gothic S. It would be the space of all rapidly decaying sequences of real numbers. So we, we suppose that if we have such, such a sequence, uh, then uh, if you multiply it by any power of n, this, this sequence will still tend to zero as n tends to infinity. So it's like a discrete version of a Schwartz function. Uh, so now we have the following map from the space of uh, Schwartz functions to the sp space of such a sequences. And so if we have one function, then we will map it in, into this discrete data, which would be the derivative of function at zero derivative of its Fourier transform at zero, uh, the uh, vector which consists of values of this function at all uh, square roots of integers and also the, the negative square roots of, negatives of the square roots of integers, 
and uh, the same information about its Fourier transform. So now what, what our previous theorem tells, uh, tells us that uh, this map is almost an uh, isomorphism. So the theorem we also were we proved together with Danilo is that this map phi, it is an isomorphism of the space of Schwartz functions into the following subspace of uh, this uh, of this space. So it means that uh, the, val uh, the values of our function, they can be any almost anything, only they have satisf to satisfy uh, these two conditions. So the first condition, so this number, it is just the Poisson summation formula. Because uh, whatever Schwartz function we take, it always has to satisfy the Poisson summation formula. And the uh, second formula, it is uh, uh, essentially, it, uh, it is a consequence of the Poisson summation formula in dimension three. Or uh, other names, we found this, this uh, formula in the lit literature, it's called the uh, uh, Guinant formula. So here, uh, R3, it's uh, uh, num uh, the number of representations of n as a sum of three squares. So it is a, like a Poisson summation formula for the lattice Z3. And because, since there is a, this very explicit uh, correspondence between fun functions in dimension one and radial functions in dimension three, we also have such a, such a relation. And what it turns out is that uh, these two relations are the only one. So now if we take any sequence of numbers satisfying these conditions, we can always produce a Schwarz function with, Schwarz function with such values. So another way to look at this result is uh, as a construction of a crystalline measures. So we say that a crystalline measure in or D, it's a tempered distribution such that this uh, mu, mu, such that mu itself and its uh, Fourier transform, they are both charges with locally finite support. So what it uh, means, maybe in other words, it means that mu is a sum of delta functions and its Fourier transform also has to be a sum of delta functions. So here's we can wonder whether such a distributions, whether they exist. And uh, so one example from them would be, for example, a uh, drug comp. comp. In uh, dimension one, it would be just sum of delta functions concentrated at integers. Then, of course, we know that uh, this uh, distribution is somehow an, what should say, eigenfunction of the Fourier transform. And so there is a theorem by, a recent theorem by Levin Alevsky, and it says that uh, if we have a crystalline measure and both sets X and Y, so the, the support of this measure itself and the support of its Fourier transform, if these both sets are uniformly discrete, it means that somehow the distances between points in, the, in this support, if they are bounded from below, it means that mu has to be a generalized drug comp. So what's a generalized drug comp? It's a drug, it's a sum of, so it's, we take a drug comp, we allow its shifts and the dilations, and take a finite linear combinations of, a, of a distributions of this kind. And so for what would follow from our result? From our result, uh, we can deduce uh, the existence of uh, some continuous family of, so to say, exotic crystalline measures. Exotic means that they are crystalline measures which are not uh, generalized drug comps. Uh, so how, how then our measure should look like? So now we take this uh, even parts of our uh, basis functions and consider a measure which depends on X and looks like this. So this would be measures con concentrated at, uh, okay, so maybe here there is one. Okay. I also, I think I forgot to include the negatives of 
negatives here. So this should be delta of square root of n and also delta of minus square root of n. And of course, like our, our result does not contradict the theorem of Levendolevsky because uh, this, uh, the, here the support it will not be uniformly discrete. And so how, how do we prove the interpolation formula? So what we will do, we will explicit, we'll give an explicit construction of uh, interpolation basis. And so what would be convenient for us is to consider, uh, to separately consider the space of odd Schwartz functions and the space of even Schwartz functions. And because uh, so the uh, Fourier transform, it has different eigenvalues on this both uh, subspaces, so it will be easy, easy for us to go on like this. And so as my uh, PhD advisor, Don Zagir, he always told me that if you want to, not only me, but everybody, that uh, if you want to compute something explicit, um, explicitly, consider the generating functions. So what I do here, I consider the generating functions of these basis functions, which I want to find. So we consider such a function f, which would be the sum of uh, my uh, elements of the interpolating basis, but in the space of even Schwartz functions. And f tilde, it would be the same generating uh, sum, but with the Fourier transforms. And uh, now what we do next, we take the interpolation formula and apply it to a uh, Gaussian. So the parameter tau here, it would be a uh, number in the upper, we consider tau as a number at the upper half pl uh, plane. Uh, then the <coughs> interpolation formula will be equivalent to this identity. So <coughs> now to make somehow to, to work with this easier, we'll need to introduce some notations. So we let T be this matrix in a SL to Z and S be this matrix, which is not in SL to Z. Uh, because the, the zero, this one and zero, they have to switch places. So it has to be a f function with determinant one. So I apologize. And also we will introduce the uh, slash operator. So if f is a function in the upper half plane and uh, a, b, c, d is a, a matrix in our group gamma one, then this matrix acts on our function in the following way. And you remember that the, some of the condition for, uh, for modular forms was exactly that this slash operator does not change our function. So another piece of notation we will need, we need to define, we'll, we'll consider a subgroup of SL to Z, which is generated by this element T squared and this, no, not this, but a correct matrix S. And so the group SL to Z, it is generated only by elements T and S, and gamma theta, it would be a subgroup of index three. So now, after we have introduced these notations, we can rewrite our functional equation. So we can write our functional equation this way. So now we have a function, and if we consider it as a, we remember F, it was a function of two variables, X and tau. Now we look at F as a, function at the upper half plane and treat x as a parameter. So we know that our function f, it is uh, two periodic just by construction because we have defined it as a generating function. And f tilde, it's also two periodic. And this uh, c condition we, we have received from interpolation formula can, will be, can be written like this. And so, now our plan is to solve a functional equation like this. And uh, so for this, now again, it would, it would be easier for us to this again to split our function into two halves. So here, f plus, it would be the function which is in a 
uh, eigenfunction of a Fourier transform with uh, eigenvalue plus one and f minus, it would be a function which is an eigenfunction of the uh, Fourier transform with sine minus here. Then the functional equations for f, they can be rewritten in this way. And our advantage here is that somehow this, now this for each plus or minus, we have a somehow functional equation which in involves only one function. So, uh, and uh, for example, let, let's consider the look at the plus case. So, in the, so the uh, condition which we uh, obtained here, it would be exactly the uh, condition which is uh, uh, called the f f computing a, a modular integral from a cocycle. So, somehow solving a, functional equations like this, it's, uh, it's, it's, we already have a technique for that, developing the theory of uh, modular forms. And so now what we can do, now we can look for f as a contour integral. So we would like to solve this functional equation for this, for one of these functions. So let's and so we'll construct f plus and f minus as a certain contour integrals. And so now let's look at f plus. So the, both cases, they work in a very similar way. So we define f plus as a following integral. And so this time we take our, the, our, the path of integration, it would be a semicircle which connects points one and minus one and uh, lies uh, at the upper half plane. And uh, so this function k plus, it would be the following uh, neuromorphic ke kernel. So this is how it can be written explicitly in terms of uh, classical modular forms. So here, capital J, it would be a Haupt module for our uh, group gamma theta. And Haupt module, it means that it's an isomorphism between a quotient of upper half plane by this gamma theta with a projective line. And gamma j minus, it would be this function. And lambda is a modular lambda invariant, which is a Haupt module for the group gamma of two, which we already introduced in the previous lecture. And so why do we consider uh, exactly this kernel? So this kernel has one nice properties, property. It has uh, uh, poles uh, at, the, at those points where uh, z and tau are equivalent modulo gamma theta. And in all those points, it has the same residue. So. Uh, up to normalization, it, for example, it will always have residue one. And so now, because, uh, so, so now, again, this integral, it will define our uh, function only at uh, somehow uh, in certain domain of the, upper half, of the upper half plane. So for example, it will define our uh, function f in a fundamental domain of gamma theta. So if we, Is it? Okay. So suppose that we have an upper half plane. So here we have points minus one and one. Now if we consider this uh, vertical lines, what we will get, this would be a, this would be a fundamental domain of gamma theta. And so our function f, it would be defined on this domain. And so because now, because our uh, kernel k, it has uh, poles at uh, <clears throat> exactly at the points where tau and z are invariant with respect to gamma theta. 
So whenever we cross uh, boundaries of this fundamental domain, our function will always make a jump. And so the good news is that because of the residue theorem, we can exactly ev evaluate the jump. So what will happen that if we so let <clears throat> if we consider the same integral over the same path, for, for example, in all the upper half plane, so it would be defined everywhere away from uh, away from uh, gamma theta images of uh, of this big circle. And maybe okay, probably to go like this. And like this. So our integral will always make a jump. And this jump would be uh, easily computed from this function. It would be exactly some, uh, let's say, this uh, Gaussian acted by a proper element of a modular group. And so now what, what, what we can do, uh, we, can, we, will, we will try to analytically continue the function f from, the, from this domain to all the other domains. And it means that whenever we cross the border, we will simply add the jump to cancel uh, the singularity. And now also a good property of this function gamma theta is that uh, whenever we're making a jump through the, any of the domains, we will somehow, we will never come back. Or, or we will al always make, so to say, an even number of jumps. So if we add some function, we will also take it back. So it means that uh, if we are continuing uh, our function in this way, we will never come to a contradiction. So, what we have to do now, so first we have to construct analytic continuation, and I hope I've convinced you that such an analytic continuation can be defined. And so again, well, it is uh, defined exactly because the, if we consider this group gamma theta, so it has generators, so generator t squared, which moves our function in this way, and generator s, which flips it uh, like this. And we know that uh, between t and s, the only relation which we have is that s squared is equal to 1. And we don't have other relations. Therefore, our continuation would work. And the second thing which we have to do is to prove that uh, uh, the Fourier coefficients of function f, they don't grow too quickly. Because now if we take our function f and consider it as a function of tau, so it would be too periodic, we can consider its uh, Fourier, Fourier coefficients. And then its Fourier coefficients, they would be functions with respect to x. And these functions, they are exactly the basis we are searching for. So what we also, so for our uh, interpolation formula to make sense, we need to know that uh, for each given x, the six sequence of values of these points cannot grow too fast. And because we wanted to work for all Schwarz functions, we also want, so this, uh, this uh, apply, applying these operators to f, and still to have uh, polynomial growth. And so once we have done it, what we can do now, now we can construct our functions explicitly. So here again, it is convenient for us to consider plus and uh, minus uh, spaces separately. So let Bn would be, uh, again, this uh, uh, projection of our uh, functions Bn into eigenspace of, uh, Laplace of a Fourier transform, which corresponds to value 1. So then we can define our functions as such an in Integrals And here, again, integral is uh, taken over this uh, semicircle going from minus 1 to 1. And here, the numbers g, gn, 
they would be the unique weakly holomorphic modular forms on gamma theta. So they would have weight three halves. And so here, the conditions for these functions would be that uh, those functions, they have to vanish at the cusp one, where z is equal to one. And uh, at the infinity, they have a pole, but this pole looks exactly like this. So we have this term, which, has, which is somehow responsible for the pole of order zero. And if we subtract it, then we get some bounded function. And so is another. So it turns out that somehow things also work simil similarly for, uh, for odd functions, only instead of uh, weight, uh, of considering functions of weight one half, you would have to consider functions of weight three halves. And so also what turns out for what is true for uh, sorry, is that one of the functions in our interpolating basis, it would be an elementary function. So you remember in our uh, uh, formula, where is the beginning? So here we had so here we had this function C0, which is responsible for the derivative. So now what happens is that this function is in fact a elementary function. And it can, it can be given by integral like this. So again, integral of a similar form. Only here, because we are integrating this function of weight one half, and if we do this, integral, just use, using the free expansion of Tina function, we will get a result like this. And somehow it turns out that somehow this integral was actually known for a long time. So this was a function which was found still by Ramanujan some time ago. So, so maybe he also knew the rest of the functions. OK, so, so now may, maybe you have some questions about the interpolating function. OK, if no, then thank you very much for your attention.